And I'm just, I'm tired of it. I'm just not going to fall for it. There's the Democrats and the Republicans. How many of you know that, 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 that Republicans and Democrats both can go to heaven? You didn't know that, did you? And they're so polarized. And they're so, there's so much bitterness. And they're so at odds. And it's so easy to get pulled into those debates. And into those. Listen, Jesus wants them all saved. How many of you have heard about the 1% and the 99%? That's just a tactic of the enemy to just make people mad at each other. And I'd love the 1% if I could find them. I'm not sure who they are, but I love them. Say, well, who are you for? The 1% or the 99%? I'm for the 100%. I'm for everybody. How about you? God wants them all saved. We have a message yeah. for everybody. Don't, yeah. don't dilute your message or ruin your message or ruin your influence with a certain group of people by becoming an enemy to them on a lower level. We are here to preach the message of reconciliation. It's peace on earth. Good will toward men. Yeah. Let's not allow our message and our heart to get cluttered and, and to get muddied up. We're here to reach people and to love people. And to fight the good fight of faith. There's the... the I, I felt prey to this myself uh, because most of the acts of terror are carried out by radical Muslim groups. And uh, you kind of get the idea that they don't like us. No. <laughs> and I'm just like you. We're all the same. If somebody hates me, I don't really care much for them either. And it's almost like, you know what, there's a billion Muslims in the world and, and they're Muslim nations and there's, they, they've made their choice and they hate the West, some of them, and they hate America and they hate Christianity. And I just, in my own mind, I didn't really do this verbally, but I'm just thinking, you know, subconsciously, you know, that's a billion people. They've already made their choice. We'll just go after the rest of the world. But you know, God never said that. That's not the will of God for us to just to, just to, to, to eliminate a billion people from our from from our scope or our our radar. We don't have the right to do that. Jesus died for everybody. Amen. And I was in a church, and the pastor had this was last year. He had just come back from Egypt, a, a Muslim nation, and he said he traveled around Egypt and he had preached in the underground Arab Christian churches. I didn't know there was such a thing. He said, I've, I've been there and, and I, I, I saw these people. He showed us pictures of them. And he said, these Christian Arabs were the most polite, the most hospitable, the most humble people I've ever met in my life. And I was sitting there and I repented. I said, God, forgive me for thinking that Arabs, that Muslims have already made their choice and, and, and we can't reach them. You know, maybe they have made their choice, but they can make another one. Right. It's not too late. Right. We can't just circle a billion people and say, go to hell and we'll go after the rest of them. We're supposed to reach everybody. Yeah. The Bible tells us to preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. Not just every creature that's not a Muslim or not this or not that. We're supposed to preach to everybody. I have a friend who, who's a missionary now to those nations and what he does is so top secret uh, because he has Christian people over there that are nationals and if, if, if the government knew who they were, they'd kill them. And so uh, he can't be on video, he can't let his face be seen because he would endanger their lives and he goes over all the time and he works with them. And, uh, and he said, Jesus is appearing to Muslim Arabs. Jesus is appearing to them. It's probably because people like us have decided they're unreachable, so Jesus is going himself and he ought not have to do that. But he's appearing to them and they're being saved. We can't, we can't divide people up and just dismiss this group. We want the whole world to be saved. And our message will work in any nation, with any group, in any religion. Our message is the answer. It is the power of God unto salvation Amen. to he that believes. 
So my friend said they were in a they were in an underground meeting. He's a missionary there, and, and it was top secret. Nobody knew where they were meeting except them, and uh, they kept it. You know, they had to keep it private for their lives' sake. And, and there was a knock at the door. And one of them, this just happened this year. And somebody, one of the people went to the door. They were all concerned that maybe the government had found them. And somebody was standing, man was standing at the door. And he said, uh, he said I, I'd like to come in. They said, why? He said, well, I met a man and he told me. They said, how did you know we were having a meeting here? He said, I met a man and he told me to come to this meeting. And he told me where it would be and when to be there. And they said, who was this man? He said, his name was Jesus. Do you know him? And they said, yes, we know him. Come on in. Boy, that would make it easy, wouldn't it? Things like that are happening, but we can't be so small-minded as to get involved in these political battles or these religious battles. We represent God and the God who loved the world. Amen. Amen. We've got a border problem. You know all about it being in Texas and, and Arizona. And I think it's, you know, it's a problem. It needs to be fixed. It's not fixed. It needs to be fixed. And then, but, but you've got all these forces trying to make Americans hate Mexicans and Mexicans hate Americans. I'm not going to fall for it. Amen. Yes, but they're coming up here illegally. Well, I would too if the border was open. I'd try to get here myself. Listen, we can't get pulled into that battle. I know something needs to be done. I hope they get it done. And I hope we can get some kind of agreement. But if we can't, I'm not going to get caught up in these ulterior battles and these skirmishes and, and lose my focus and lose my mission. Listen, we're supposed to reach the world and with a border like that, the world's coming to us. It just makes it a little easier. Yeah, but they're taking our jobs. Well, they haven't gotten mine yet. We need to believe God for a job. Believe God for your supply. And no Mexican or Arab or Muslim is going to take it away from you. God will help you and take care of you so you can reach the world. How many of you can see what I'm talking about? Refuse to get caught up in battles where you don't belong. You don't have time for it. You ought not get up mad and go to bed mad. Get up mad and go to bed mad. That's not what God's called us to do. That's not healthy. It's not right and it's not necessary. And if you watch so much news that you're mad all the time, cut back. Amen. There's only so much you can take. Read the good news and get happy again. Amen. Part of what we do as lights in this world is we can be happy and calm in the midst of the storm. Yes. Yes. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just not going to get so caught up in it. I'm not going to carry that weight around. Is anybody getting anything out of this? <laughs> Refuse to engage, to be drawn in. Billy Graham was asked many years ago when he was exceedingly popular. He was popular with the whole country. and He was approached by a political group and they said, would you consider running for president? We know you could win. You could be the next president of the United States. And he looked at him and he said, no, he said, I'm not going to do it. Why not? He said, I couldn't stand the demotion. <laughs> you mean there's a job more important than president of the United States? Yes, representing the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. That's more important. That's a different battlefield. That raises us up to a different level. We have to look at things from above. I'm just not going to be pulled into these earthly, fleshly, carnal battles that men spend their lives fighting because it's not worth it. And I know there are things that need to be changed. And I know there are injustices that have been done. But you probably can't fix it in your lifetime. Jesus is going to fix everything when He comes back. It will be settled. But you don't have to use the years that you have to fight a battle that can't be solved this side of heaven. Nobody needs to take that upon themselves. Listen, we got other things to do. I got other people to reach. Hallelujah. Some people think they have to have an opinion about everything. Well, I'll tell you what I do. You know, it's okay to say, I don't know. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe you know, but it's okay to say, I don't care. How about that? I've kind of gotten that way about the border. I get upset every time I see it on the news and then I finally decided, you know what? I don't care! Well, did you know terrorists could come up through there and, 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 and attack? What am I going to do about it? I'd rather just love Mexicans. Preach to the lost. Love mankind. Reach out to people. And if they can fix it, fine. If they can't fix it, we're still, we still got a job to do. That's right. Trust God for our safety and not the border agents. That's right. Are you getting anything? Yeah, I know. I know there's big problems. Whatever your pet peeve is, it's easy to get upset about it. I'm telling you, back off. Pull away. Say, you know what? I'm not going to fight this battle anymore. I've had enough. I'd rather be happy. I, I am. And I, now I've taken this to heart. It's really helped me. And, and we, we took a room in our house. I had one room in my house where the TV is, where the news is. And, and I have a chair there and I watch the news. And I realized, you know, I think I'm watching too much of this because I'm either mad or scared all the time <laughs> about something. So, so we had another room that, that, that overlooks our deck. And I had a contractor come over and we just knocked the wall out. And I said, put as much glass as you can in this wall and so that I can look out over my deck in my backyard. And so they did. And I bought another chair and I put it in front of that window. No. And I just go in there. It's a great place to spend end times. <laughs> I go in there and sit and look out the window. And I see the clouds go by. They're not mad. They're not scared. They're not, they don't have an opinion. They just float by. And the trees are out there and they blow in the wind. And there's squirrels and birds and hummingbirds. And they all just do their thing. And I just sit there and become one of them. No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a point or trying to make a statement or mad at somebody. I want to be happy. We were created to be happy and full of love and peace and joy. And when that starts to erode, you need to find out what is robbing me of my sense of, of peace and happiness and joy that God has given, that Jesus paid that I might have. Why? 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 And boy, if you're mad at people, you're in the wrong business. Now, there are some things, Just this is just sort of the balance and we don't have time to go into it. Well, we might go into some of it. There, there are some things worth fighting for. I'm not saying we ought to just roll over and give up. There are things worth standing up for. And let me just give them to you briefly. Faith is worth fighting for. Faith, the gospel, the name of Jesus. There are things in our faith that we should be willing to fight and die for. Faith, family is worth fighting for. And freedom. Thank God for freedom. Thank God for the freedom we have in this nation. Men died so that we could have it and we need to fight for it and we need to stand up for it and we need to do all we can to, uh, to, to keep our freedom in this nation. Can you say amen? amen? But there are a lot of things that people are upset about that don't really fall into those categories that don't really make that much difference that are just causing them to, 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 to waste life and, and to miss uh, the good things that they could be enjoying in life. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says this in Ephesians. It says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Amen. It says, be angry and sin not. So the, the, God's, he's, he's allowing us to be angry. He knows that when things come up, you're going to get mad. Be angry and sin not. So what do we do? How, do you, how can you be angry and sin not? Well, he said, by the time the sun goes down, make sure you have it taken care of. Don't, he said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, don't go to bed mad every night. It's not healthy. It's not right. And you don't have to do it. So don't do it. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell this story, and hopefully I'll get to my next point. But 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 there there are things you can do in life that that, in other words, that you can fight for without just having anger 
and hatred in your heart. You, you understand? When you have the moral high ground on an issue, you can take a stand and be salt and light, and you're not sinning. That's right. And you may be, you may have a lot of emotion, but it's not sin.